Hello, welcome to another edition of Projects of Nigeria, where we deliver quality real estate information and solutions to you. Today we are joined with two awesome gentlemen, Mr. Ayer Baru, uh, I'm, I'm at my right, the director at North Court, and to my left we have Ajim Mutil Balogun, the MD of Mutil Balogun and Co. Today, as always, we'll be talking about real estate, but today we'll be talking more about mortgage, finance, and how this all this affects the real estate sector. So um, I'm going to be starting with you, Alaji Mutsu Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Well, thank you. I'm Aji Mutsu Kolapo Organetega Balugu, the MD and CEO of Mutsu Balugu & Co. A firm that started about seven years ago, Mutsu Balugu & Co. started about seven years ago, where a firm that started with staff of three, but now we are about 42. We have about 12 branches. We, our head office is in Victoria Island. We are into estate valuation. We are into property valuation, property agency, property management, feasibility and viability appraisers, facility management. We are committed to our clients and we ensure that the services we render, we render it to the best of our ability. And at the end of the day, we also pray that most of these clients that we have even worked for in the past, they come back to us and they give us referrals, which is very okay by us. And very in a short while, we are going to go into property development. That is very key to our vision of the company. So um, I can assure you that by the time we also go into, because we are presently, we are partnering with for foreign companies, which very soon we are going to kickstart on Project development. Okay, thank you very much. I like uh, let me quickly give Mr. Ayebaro a chance to introduce himself and tell us what not caught really is all about. So, uh, thank you very much for bringing us here. You know, it's not every day we get to uh, uh, meet people like you and you know discuss with uh, the public in this manner. So, I'm um, like you rightly said. My name is Ayo Ibaru. I head the uh, research and advisory division of. North Court Real Estate. So what we do is um, we're largely known for our research, uh, for which we've won the Euro Money um, Award in, uh, for Nigeria, and also uh, I mean for about two or three years uh, back to back. Uh, now we started operations in 2013, and aside from research, we do facility management, property management, but pretty much. Um, one of the core things we aim at doing is ensuring that we make the market in Nigeria uh, less opaque. A lot of things happen, things are not professionally done. So part of what we try to do is ensure uh, that the market is very transparent, people know what's going on, which is why we place such a focus on uh, data. So we have research reports that are free on our website, uh, northcourtrealestate.com. Um, we do them twice a year, and then we've also partnered with organizations like the RICS, uh, West Africa Property Investment Summit, you know, and there's a lot of things that we do, but I'll probably leave that to um, hopefully as we go into this uh, conversation. Yeah. Okay, so it's safe to say you guys are very data-oriented. We like to think so, yes. We like to think so. We yeah. do a lot of research. Yes. So yeah. as far as this session is concerned, yes. we can trust your information. I believe as, so. I mean, as concerns as it concerns research. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Uh, Aji, back to you, sir. Um, you are, I mean, your friend, Mr. Balogun and Co. You are very um, hands-on when it comes to relating with um, the buyers, the sellers, I mean, of real estate in the I mean, okay, first of all, maybe you should tell us what part of the market you're creating. Well, we, like I said, our core values, okay. our core value encapsulates so many things. Okay. We are into property valuation, okay. agents, property agency, project development, okay. project management. Okay, on you the know? agency part now. On the agency. What part, what, what aspect of the market are you focused on? Is it the prime property, the soft prime? The middle market, which one exactly? Well, we focus on all. On all. But one good thing about us is we deal with, we deal mostly with the high end. The high end? Yes. Okay. When I talk of the high end, we talk of Banana, we talk of Ikoyi, we talk of Victoria. Victoria Island. Island. We deal more of those areas. Of those areas. Perfect. Okay, so then um, 
But I want you to tell us right now, because you deal with clients on a daily basis. Yeah. So we want to know what's going on with clients, the complaints they have. You understand? Because we see in the real estate market today that a lot of properties are vacant. You know, um, there are a lot of complaints, there are a lot of reasons. That's what we want to know now. Just, just give us a quick summary of what's going on in the industry. We can share a few stories. Well, um, I could remember in two, three years ago, the economy was very, very vibrant. So many transactions. In fact, in a week, you can close about two, three transactions. Solid transactions. Okay. Most especially in banana. But, I mean, two years down the line, I mean, the economy is so, it's so stiff in the sense that the, the, the money is not really in the circulation. People are of the opinion that, oh, it's economic meltdown. Is this, is that. But the fact still remains that. If your present position does not suit you, you have to reposition yourself. As far as, as far as we are concerned, what we all need is repositioning. Once you reposition yourself, definitely you are going to achieve more. Look, like I said, in three, in three years ago, you can conclude transactions. But now that the market is so dull, in fact, I can even say that maybe late last year, about the last quarter of last year, that is, why, well, that is when the economy started picking again. But the fact still remains that it has, because of the downtown, it has made even banana. Banana would have gone very high, up to like 500,000 per square meter. But because of the economic situation, it has not really gone up. But the fact still remains that people are still transacting. But it's not like before. Not like before. Okay. Yeah. So what are the complaints from the clients, from the buyers, from, I mean, People that were your clients back then, that are not buying anymore, that are not missing like from the high end anymore. What are the new challenges they are going through? Well, the, the, the major challenge, as we speak, is what is, is they are not liquid. They are not liquid. Most of them are not liquid. Okay. And some of them that are liquid, because of what we have and the kind of government we operate now, they are a bit steep okay. in buying those properties. Okay. So, in your opinion, you feel they, they are looking for deals. They are looking to buy of good course. properties for way less. Of course, people, people must look for deals at every point in time. Okay. The best deal, like I said, is more of the buyer's market. Okay. It's more of the tenant's market. That is why you see so many properties there. Before, companies would take properties for their staff. Companies can as well loan their staff money to purchase properties. But now, it's more of, it's, it's more of the, the buyer's market. It is the buyer that dictates. It is, what they it is what the buyer has that we can always work on. And at the end of the day, what we do mostly is for us to let the landlords or let the owners know that, look, gone are the days. Where you, where you can name any price and somebody will come from nowhere and buy. But now, it's not that we are not in that market. The market that we have is a reality market. Look, if I buy this at social amount, what is the return on investment? We have to look into that. Because without you looking into return on investment, there is as good as if you are throwing away your money. So people, people that are ready to buy now, they are more concerned about what they are going to get at the end of the day. So two things. First, there's the liquidity issue. Oh yeah. And then even the people that have cash, that have the finance to buy, are looking for the best possible deals. Of people course. Or realistic deals, even my hand. Let Sorry. me let, let me give you a typical example. In fact, I'm doing it as we speak. I have a block of five flat, a block of four flat with a penthouse, somewhere Abia Street in Banana. Ordinarily, I sold a block of six flats about three years ago. I sold it for. About 850 million. The whole block. The whole block. Okay. Block of six flat on about 1,200. Okay. Now, I'm say, I have a block of four flat with a penthouse. I'm looking for even 650 million. I can't get it. Ordinarily, I should be looking at maybe 900 million. But for now, I can't even get it. Okay, and I now decided let me be selling per flat. Somebody came up just last week telling me he wants to purchase the penthouse. How much does he want to purchase? He's pricing the penthouse for 120 million. A three bedroom penthouse in banana. It's, I mean, the, 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 way, the way the market is now, in fact, we were even fortunate, <coughs> according, we, we, we had to, I mean, I had to even bring in the owner 
we have to discuss it extensively before the guy can even come up to 147 million. And what we are looking at as a rock bottom, we are looking at even at 165 million. But because it is the buyer's market, we don't have option. So you closed at 147. We are still on it anyway. Okay. Because we are not really comfortable. I'm of the opinion that look, if I must sell it, I must sell it 150 million. But the landlord, I mean, because he's a very simple gentleman. He said, Well, let us do it at 147 million. But we are still on it as we speak. And like I said, the man also wants to buy. In fact, he said he, he would like to even buy all the flats. But the problem is liquidity issue. Now he's saying that, okay, he might buy, but he, he might buy another two flats. Maybe we should give him like six months for him to make the payment. And we look at what we want to use the money for. He said, no, it can't work. He said we should give him two years for him to buy the, uh, which is not going to be possible. But all things being equal, I mean, it's a market that is just picking, okay. and we hope to get the better okay. very that's, soon. That's awesome. So back to you, Mr. Ayobaru. Um, you had what the challenges are from <coughs> the agent's point of view, from a, a yeah. real estate broker's point of view. Mm -hmm. You are more into research. Can you tell us exactly what's going on? I mean, what the government, what systems are doing, what the Nigerian yes. system is going to mitigate all this? I mean, it's, it's a very good question you asked. I mean, uh, listening to what he said, I could just uh, immediately identify uh, because we have a, a research analyst, you know, combing the entire market, uh, talking to people who are aware of things that are going on. Now, let me start out by saying that the real estate market is a sub-market of, you know, the Nigerian economy itself. Okay. And I mean, I can imagine, I can, I, can, I can only imagine where we all were this time last year where a dollar was almost going to 500 naira. It was really scary, yeah? Desperate situation. Aha. Uh -huh. So, um, a lot of things changed. There wasn't money to do much. In fact, the government had to come in in March, April uh, to intervene with the I&E window and introduce uh, liquidity into the market. And so we found out that even though developers still had money, they held their hands, their funds very close to their chest. They weren't willing to take the risk of putting out you know, money for new development. And they were waiting to see what would happen. We all know that Nigeria is a mono economy, meaning we depend on oil. A lot of work has been done, I must say, to diversify the economy. But the best we've been able to hit so far has been $71 uh, uh, to a barrel. I'm giving that background because everything runs on how the economy works. Right, and you know we've had inflation, which has been improving, and all of that. So, what we found was even expatriates who were the toast of uh, Banana Island, where we are right now, um, firms started to review their payroll, started to look at the number of people they flew in. I mean, I never thought we would see it, but expatriates were now sharing, you know, apartments. You know, the days were gone when they would come in and they would have individual, you know. I mean, apartments to themselves, but now they were sharing. So um, the oil and gas took a hit. Uh, um, the telecoms firms took a hit. Uh, banks were very careful. By and large, the big spenders were looking at how they were going to uh, uh, manage their costs because the economy wasn't. So, I mean, all things went well, uh, uh, and the Nigerian economy came out of a five-quarter long recession. So what we've seen now is the very announcement, which is why communication is very key. I mean, just you know, adding that. The very announcement that Nigeria was out of recession brought in some positive energy. And then what we now saw was uh, uh, developers were gradually returning to site. People who had thrown away their plans for all their projects you know, brought those plans together and started saying, how can we make this work? How can we make this work? And, that's part of what we found in the residential market. But there's something I want to also highlight here. We find that um, mid-income earners and people around that bracket are moving closer to the CBDs. Okay. And they are looking for you know, what we like to call in, in our firm UK-style houses. Okay, sorry. So, By CBD, you mean central business district? Yes, I do, central business district. So um, you find um, um, them moving towards those areas and going into what we call um, UK-style houses, you know, just so that they can be near their places of work. So they take a nice two-bed, a nice one-bed that is you know, well-finished, 
and all of that so that they can be near. So we have found an uptake in that um, side of the market. I mean, if you're in a three bedroom right now, very wide, eh, you're taking a risk, I wouldn't advise you to. So that's what we have in the residential. I mean, if we had more time, I could go into the office market okay. and, and all of Thank that. You. But Thank you very much. We find that, just in summary, that okay. the market is, is picking up. It's not full blast yet, but okay. we can see that, you know, they are, they are, they, I mean, even like he was even saying, um, even landlords in this area, yes, they are being flexible about their rents, but new leases were being signed, new which was not the case. So the market is pretty much correcting itself. All right. So you've talked about... Um, what the organizations did when the um, issues hit, the challenges hit the economy and all that. But can you tell us what the different financial institutions, the NMRC and all the likes are doing right now to help us get out of this whole mess that we're in? Okay, so let me start with the NMRC. Okay, so this is, this is how it happened. When people went to commercial banks to get uh, loans for property projects or you know, development, the banks would say things like, oh, the real estate sector is too risky. And the background to that is titling you know, is an issue. And also, I mean, in the case of uh, foreclosure, there were no foreclosure laws at that time to protect uh, commercial banks who gave uh, funds to individuals. Now, right now, we have four states in Nigeria, I believe, that have uh, signed up to the, the current, yes. So we have uh, Cross River, we have Kogi, we have Delta and we have Kaduna, just four of them right now. So, you know, we're making Lagos. progress. Lagos is, is still, you know, hedging their best. But I think in time they should. Lagos is known to be very progressive. Um, and then when you went to the mortgage banks and you asked the mortgage banks for the same said funds, the mortgage banks will say things like, oh, we don't have enough money, hence the, uh, uh, the NMRC. Now, the NMRC uh, uh, came up as a project in 2013. Um, but it wasn't until uh, um, 2015 uh, that they got their license from the central bank. Now, how does the NMRC work? Um, the World Bank uh, arm, um, IDA, responsible for giving soft loans, partnered with Nigeria's uh, government to provide $300 million uh, for, you know, in terms of uh, loans for, for housing projects. And so the NMRC got about 250, 260 million out of that. Now, let me clarify. The mistake people think is that they got, uh, the NMRC got that money at once. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't. What happened was um, it's tied to performance metrics. That's how well the NMRC performs, and that fund is given over a period of time. Now, the much touted figure of Nigeria's housing deficit is uh, 17 million. So, let us say it takes 1 million naira to build a house. By the time you calculate it, you are left with 17 trillion to meet that housing demand. Million. And that figure was as of 2013. So, I mean, when you look at $300 million, the entire money received from the World Bank through their soft loan um, IDA, when you convert that, I mean, you barely get anything. So it's like a drop of salt in the ocean. It goes in and it dissolves. You don't even know what happens. So what the NMRC thought of doing and you know, was saying, look, you know what? Why don't we see how we can leverage that fund so that we can probably loan it up and then get more money to give out as loan. So what the NMRC, in summary, is to do is, you know, support the mortgage banks with funds so that the mortgage banks can give at fair rates to you and I to get loans for our various, you know, housing, housing needs. That's, that's pretty much what the NMRC is, is, is around to do. But then, I mean, if you really look at it, they're supposed yes. to buy back the loans. Yes. What's the process of that? I mean, do we go to the mortgage banks to get loans? Yes. After what period does the NMRC kick in to say they want to buy back? And how effective have they been? Okay. You understand, in, in the past, um, how many years now? Yes. Have they been operating? How yeah. effective have they been? And more importantly, yes. how accessible? You see, there okay. is, you see the that's, most that's important thing is accessible. we need, we need to, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I don't see them operating. Okay. That's the truth because it's, they are not accessible. Mm. We need to be accessible. You see, if, the, if this thing is not accessible, mm -hmm. I mean, the property market will never, it won't be the way we want it to be. Yeah. So the fact still remains that this loan or whatever they are called or anything they are, this should be accessible to be accessible. a common man. Yes. Yeah. 
And also bear in mind that uh, as at 2015, the Nigerian real estate sector, this is construction sector combined, was contributing like 6% to the GDP. Mm, yes. Now yes. we are at like 2%. No, the, the real estate GDP, uh, uh, contribution to GDP as of um, the last time the numbers came out, uh, towards the end of last year, is 6.9%. 6.9%. Real estate contribution to GDP. I mean, it's, it's, it's not as... as, sure as six, six oh, yes. Percent. It's in our report. Okay, so but then you're talking about an industry that has the capacity to contribute yes. up to like between 25 and 30 percent to the GDP. Yes. So well, yeah, you understand, it's, mm. it's like a disaster. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, look, look at the gap. Mm -hmm. well, the but then, it, it, I, I guess it's just because some people have no reason, reason it out that, okay, yeah. this sector can actually move us out of this recession we, we yeah, I mean, I mean, just to, just to chip in, you know, to, to the comments that you have made, a lot of people have said that until housing is made a priority in Nigeria, we won't really see the progress we need to see. I mean, uh, the NMRC came out with a research document that stated clearly uh, that for every house that is built, you have 5.2 jobs, that's what they put. And what we need to uh, say here is the reason why the NMRC came to be in the first place was because of these issues that we have all identified. I mean, at that time, not only did they have a, a, a seminar set up to discuss this, I mean, the president himself was, I mean, in breakout groups to look at what's going on, and we have this. Now, when we talk about accessibility, I think that's, that's just one of the many issues that this thing, this uh, project is facing. Okay, again, you're looking at the interest rates. I mean, the, 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 there's no way they can, they can loan out funds, you know, lower than anything that the nation as a whole is getting as an interest rate. But what I even want to add again is, um, I think tightening is still also another issue because the NMRC, before they give out a loan, they have to pre-qualify any applicant. Yeah. And they're going to look at your tightening, which is still an issue we're trying to work on as a country. And then also they will look at a whole number of things. So, I mean, what I would like to say here, because I know we have to round up, and I know we are, we are, we are, we are going to have to uh, discuss other issues. There are a number of stakeholders in the whole housing problem. It's not just the government. The government is one. It's a very major source. I mean, in countries like the Netherlands, the government gives out blocks of land, I mean, acres of land, so that um, affordable housing units can be developed and then there's a proper pre-qualification process. Okay. But we also have people like individuals, like you and I. We have um, professionals, you know, people like estate surveyors, are like they, architects. Are the government really, are they really looking at working with professionals? That's number one. Mm. Then in terms of advocacy, yes. what has been their role? All this we have to look into it. Yes. You know, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's not a one-way thing. So it's something us, that... Let us look at it this way. Because we have to round up, yes. we're going to give advice. Yeah. Yes. We're going to give our opinions. So I would say from you, Adjo, well, tell as, us what you feel the government... As far do, as I'm concerned... How they can support and as far the industry. As, yes, the way, you see, first of all, I think the government should look at more of the professionals to bring in their ideas, mm. to bring in their professional knowledge. Let them come up. Let them, mm. I mean, let them look at all this, it, which is really the building team, because they are very important in this game. So let them come together. Let them advise. Let them see how this thing can be done and for us to have a better result. Mm. So once, if this thing is looked into, then in as much that, you see, the fact still remains that people I mean, if you ask me, I want to, I want to own a roof. Yeah. I want to be in my own house. And how do I do it? I need what? I need money mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. And the only way the government can assist is for the government to gear up the mortgage complex. Mm -hmm. Let them look at it. And more importantly, the lending rate is very important. Very, very critical. So if all this can be looked into, and also the government regulations, even the developers, they have issues. Mm -hmm. And some of the issues they have, they are government regulations. regulations no. And I must tell you, the recession we are talking about, it's all about government regulations. Because the regulations changed. It changed. So it affected so many things. That was what even led to that recession. Let's give Mr. Ayubaros his own advice. Okay. And submission. Thank you very much. So um, part of the background of, of what led to the recession 
um, was our dependency on oil. I mean, it's clear, it's documented, and it's something that has been researched, and the government, on the back of that, decided that the country had to diversify. That said, um, there are a lot of things that need to happen. Once again, I would like to stress, um, if we want to wait for the government, uh, we might wait a bit longer than we need to. Uh, professionals have a role to play. Individuals have a role to play. The community has a role to play in seeing that housing as a problem is resolved in Nigeria. Now again, I also want to add, um, titling still remains an issue that the government needs to look into. Um, regulations as regards zoning, setback laws need to be looked into. Density of, of development. I mean, there are some places right now, I mean, thankfully there have been improvements where if you are submitting a project that is less than five floors in Lekki or in Victoria and in Lagos, it will not be approved. It has to be more than it that. It has to be more than that because the government is realizing, the government is realizing that, like they usually do, it might take them some time, but they usually realize that you have to ensure that certain laws are supportive of development you want to see. And then finally, um, a city is like a human being. A city is like a living organism. Cities grow, cities evolve. So um, 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 zones have to be changed. Something cannot be residential forever. It might have to change. Something cannot be uh, industrial. The use assigned cannot be industrial forever. It might have to change. So I would like to round up this uh, 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 part of my, of, of my conversation with, with, with you out there, with the fact that it is very easy to say the government has a role to play, and I agree 100%. They have a role to play, but professionals have a role to play. The community has a role to play. Individuals have a role to play. I mean, looking at the community now, the last time the Lagos State government tried to hike the toll gates first, yeah. the community came together and stopped them. Okay. In the UK, if you want to charge a higher price for a pint of milk than people are used to, the community will ensure that you don't do it. So as a community, as individuals, as professionals, as the government, there is a role that we have to play. And if we all play our role, even individuals can petition government. I mean, if we play the roles that we need to play, the problem will get solved sooner than later. And we can all move forward. Yes, we can all move forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibarri. Thank, thank you so much. You too. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. Um, please, for your comments, for your contributions, please send us some comments, send us your contributions um, at uh, Sugram International on Instagram, or you can send us on